Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storyville Photography and today I'm going to show you how I achieved this edit on my cute little scarecrows. In this corner you will find the information about the camera, lens, and settings that I used to take this image. This is the before and this is the after. You guys, I know it is quite drastic the change, but I took this image towards the end of the session and it was quite dark, but the power of Lightroom and Photoshop, I knew I could recover it no problem and you guys will be able to too. So the first thing I did was open my image into Lightroom and I increased the temperature, the tint, the exposure, the shadows, and the whites. And then I went ahead and opened it into Photoshop. Now that I'm in Photoshop, the first thing I wanna do is increase the shadows even more. So I am going to hit Command J and copy my background layer, come up to the ACR filter, Adobe Camera Raw in case you're unfamiliar and then I'm gonna pull my shadows up even more here to about like 64 65 percent and hit OK and I just love what it does because it increased um, the shadows even under their little hats so that was quite helpful the next thing I want to do is layer and flatten my image and I'm gonna make another copy of this background layer command J I'm going to go back into my ACR filters and then I'm going to go into my presets and I want to use the Touch of Autumn 6 for the color toning base. I just love this preset. It's so, so helpful to help achieve that fall look. Now you can adjust the opacity with the slider if you want. That is the bonus about using the presets in the ACR filter in Photoshop. And also if you didn't want it on the entire image, you would just add a layer mask and mask off where you want. For me, I'm keeping it at 100% and at 100% opacity for this image. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is flatten the image. And I want to run the painterly action. I love this and I apply it to almost all of my images. It's such a cool effect. Okay, I'm going to keep the paint, painterly base at the 100% and I'm going to choose the brighten up um, and leave that on at 100% also. But I want to mask some of this off. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have a soft black brush at 100% opacity. You always want to mask this off any of the details you plan on keeping, um, like the eyes, the fingers, or it can look really wonky, the necklaces. It's really just a personal preference what you choose to do. I'm going to bring back the laces and the patches. Okay. And then I can take it up here and get rid of some of it on the hat. And the next thing I want to do is decrease my brush opacity to about 40%. And I am going to come back, expand my brush by using the right bracket key to downsize. You use the left. It's just very quick and helpful to go back and forth. And I'm going to just mask it off a little bit of the bottom and there. And then I want to come to the brighten up and also mask this off of the bottom at 40% opacity and up there. And then let me show you the before and after. And now I want to continue on with the color toning before I get into editing my subjects. So for that, I'm going to come up to the crazy for color and I'm going to first select the lavish turquoise. This is going to come on really strong guys, but um, I like to see where I'm painting and then I dial it back. You can also open this grouping up if you want and adjust or close layers off. But for here, I'm keeping everything on. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the soft white brush at 100% opacity and go over the darker areas up here. And then I'm gonna crank this down to zero and slowly increase it to where my eye likes it. And about there looks good to me before and after. And then I'm gonna come and do the same with Perfect Plum. Soft white brush, 100% opacity, and I'm gonna go over kind of the orangey areas I love the fall orange colors, but I also love adding a little something unexpected. And for me, this did just that. Again, you can play with the opacity to make it stronger, weaker, whatever you want. That's the before and after color a little here too. Okay. Next up, I'm gonna come over and run my ultimate dodge and burn. You guys, this is gonna make the most drastic change to this image. I love it and I use it on all of my images, dare I say. <laughs> um, so 
I kind of did that really quick. You want to make sure that you open this big group and then I have them um, uh, grouped together to make it easy for you. Make sure you click the downward arrow to where you see the layer adjustment with the black layer mask. You're going to have a soft white brush. I like to use it at 100% opacity. And the first thing I'm going to do is just increase this a little bit. And I'm going to run over the shoes, the clothing, um, anything I want to dodge and burn at the same time. And I'll do this really quick so you guys aren't like bored watching all these little details. Okay, up on the hat, around here. Now, obviously, if you're doing this for a client, like I say in all of my um, tutorials, take your time. <laughs> make sure you don't do any halos or make things look funky. Um, but I'm just doing this for you guys, so you will get the gist. Okay, so that's the before and after of that. And then I'm going to come over to the extra dodge, and I want to run this over almost the same things. Um, really brighten up where I want it brighten, and I just love how it makes it so easy to do. And then if you don't like something, hit the X. The X will take you to the black layer mat, um, uh, not the layer mask, <laughs> the black down here that will mask off where you don't want it. Okay. I'm gonna come down to the shoes. Okay, and now I notice that I want that even brighter where I just did all the dodging. So instead of remasking, I am just going to hit Command J to copy. Woo, you see what I did there? Sometimes my computer, um, like the keyboard, gets stuck for whatever reason. So I'm going to go ahead and mask that off of there and here. Does that ever happen to you guys? <laughs> it's a good thing that I noticed. Um, and then if I don't want, like, say I don't want that at full opacity, I will just come down here and crank it up a little bit. So there we go. And obviously, you would want to spend more time really making sure that you make this look perfect as you can. I'm going to probably miss a bunch of spots because I've already done this, but I just want you guys to get the effect of how I edited this image. Not necessarily as great as I did the first time around. Okay. So I'm not going to use the extra burn here. I don't have a need for it, but this is the before and after of the clothing. You can also turn the grouping down if you want and just slowly, you know, increase the opacity to wherever you'd like. Okay, now I'm going to come over to the dodge and I'm going to go over the skin quickly again. And I think when my mouse got stuck, it went ahead and dodged over her face, um, one of my scarecrows, which is fine. I just like to keep things organized, but if I came back, I could mask some of that off. See, it got stuck and it definitely brightened her up a little bit, but I like to keep it categorized. Okay, so here we go. And then the same thing, what I did down there with their clothes, I want to make another duplicate layer of that. So I'm just going to hit Command J and that brightened them up a lot. And then if I wanted, I had extra dodge or burns. For the burn, I am going to go close into their cute little faces and I am going to go over where I <laughs> did their awesome makeup, guys. No judging here. I'm not a makeup artist, but I feel like it did the trick um, for the costumes. <laughs> I'm going to just highlight over there. Again, take your time. Do not rush through it as I am. Oops, see, I'm sticking again. I think I might need to delete things off of my computer. It's moving a little bit slow and sticking. Okay. And then you could also, like, if you want to touch up some, um, she has these really cute freckles. You can go ahead and do that. I'm going to get it over her eyebrows. Oh, my goodness. Sticking city, guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. My goodness golly. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to go down here. Okay, I don't know if I should continue on with all the sticking. This is crazy to me. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's enough of that. 
Then I'm gonna come over and do the same for my youngest little scarecrow. People think they're twins all the time, but they're actually two years apart. One is just really tall for her age and the other's on the shorter side. But they really are the best of friends, I love it. Okay, running through there. Gonna go over her eyebrows. Goodness, I think it's happening when I make the brush smaller. I don't really know. If you guys know the answer to this, if I need to clean off some things on my computer or why it sticks, um, I am all ears. Okay, there we go. So, backing up here, the last thing I want to do is open up the environment. And I'm going to just go to the extra burn. And I'm going to run that, make sure it's back at, on the white, run it over the ground. And then I'm going to choose the black brush because I want some of it masked off of their legs. Again, take your time so you're not haloing and being sloppy like I am in this situation. Um, okay, and again, like how things are blown out there, you would just go into... Um, like the clothing or whatever and mask some of that off. I'm not gonna spend the time to do that, <laughs> but that's how it's done, it's super easy. Okay, so with the Ultimate Dodge and Burn, look at that, it is so crazy incredible. And once it's all closed up and stuff and you have the group highlighted, you can also be like, okay, I went a little bit extreme to that, I'm gonna just slowly boost it up and see where I like it. For me, I like extreme, it is gonna stay at 100%. Okay, then the last thing I want to do is come in, there's a few last things, to the Storyville Retouch, and I'm going to first come into the Brightened Skin and Eyes. We already brightened the skin, so I'm not going to worry about that here, but I want to come into the eyes and brighten them up even more. So I'm going to go to Brighten Eyes, make sure I have a soft white brush, 100% opacity, coming in hot, okay, and then I'm going to go over the eyes here. And then I want to also brighten the highlights, so, or the catch lights. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to crank that down. About 50% looks good. And I'm going to come over here, and the same with my daughter. We're going to first brighten her eyes. And then highlights. Okay. Close that up before, after. And now I want to come into the Eye Enhancement, open this up, and for my youngest, she has blue eyes, so I'm going to enhance them. It's going to come on strong. Just color in where you want the color, and then I dial it all the way down and just leave a hint of it so it's not overpowering. Um, although because they are dressed as cute little scarecrows, I probably could go more intense with it. And my oldest daughter has green eyes, so I'm going to do the same thing for her. You can see where some of that dodge and burn went there from my mouth stick, my mouth sticking. Um, so crazy, I don't know why it does that. Okay, and increase that. Before and after. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is come over to the rosy cheeks and lips. Open this up, and I'm going to go to Rosy Red, put it on Soft Light, the blending mode, with a soft white brush at 100% opacity. I'm going to paint in her tongue, make it pop a little bit more. If you get out of lines, again, hit the X, it will change you to a black brush, and you can just mask it off. And then I'm going to, and then I switch it back to the white brush using the exact same technique, using the X. Then here she needs a little touch up here. A little on her cheeks. And turn it down. Okay. Before and after. Now they do have some dark circles kicking and it was a little bit more of a challenge to remove them 
this time around because of their like face makeup. So I just lightened them a little bit. And to do that, I just have a new layer and I hit the option key Oop. and I selected like a lighter area on this side. And I'm going to turn it down quite a bit, probably to about like 23%. I might increase it. And I'm just going to go over that a little bit. And it just kind of brightens it up a teeny bit. And I'm going to do the same for the other side, holding the option key down. I'm going to sample around and brighten that eye up. <laughs> that eye up. For here, I'm going to put it on another new layer, decrease the opacity, sample it, paint, sample it and paint. And you can always increase the opacity too. Okay. Okay, the last thing I want to do, I'm going to just go ahead and flatten all this. Oops. Um, flatten. And to get rid of this in the up corner, uh, the corner, <laughs> the up corner, my goodness, this blowout up here, I'm going to Command J, copy the background layer, and I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to circle here and then a lot of times you could just hit the um, <laughs> this fill generative fill gosh I cannot speak today guys and it will fill it in for you but if you don't want to waste one of your um, uh, like AI options because I know you only get so many a month and I wouldn't want to waste it on that so what I did was make a copy and then select it command T and then I hold the shift up and I just pull up on here and out. And then that kind of took care of that. You can also crop it in if you want. Um, so yeah, guys, that is it. So this is where we started and this is where we finished. Much more sloppy than my original image, but all the same technique and the colors and the tones are there. Just take your time and not rush through it. Okay, thanks guys. You can find everything I used here at www.storyvillephotography.com. Have a wonderful day. Bye.